On the morning of March the 13th, 1996, Thomas Hamilton entered the gymnasium of Dunblane Primary School in Scotland, carrying several handguns and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. In the space of a few minutes, 16 children, one teacher, and Hamilton himself were dead. The massacre led to a government inquiry headed by Lord William Cullen. His report eventually resulted in the banning of all privately held handguns in Scotland, England and Wales. Although the media and political attention around the Cullen report was primarily focused on firearms legislation, it also brought to light a host of sinister circumstances that surrounded Hamilton's life and death. Thomas Hamilton was a store owner and former scout leader. He left the Scouts in 1974 after he was asked to resign due to suspicions of him having indecent intentions towards the boys in his care. Regardless of his removal from the Scouts, Hamilton operated a total of 15 boys clubs throughout central Scotland from 1981 to his death in 1996. One club in particular drew the ire of George Robertson, the Shadow Secretary of State for Scotland. During the inquiry, Robertson claimed that his son had attended one of Hamilton's clubs, the Dumblane Rovers. Robertson had observed the club in operation at a gymnasium and described it. There were a large number of small boys in shorts, stripped to the waist, being bossed around by two or three middle-aged men, swaggering around in a very military-type way. I think I have described it as looking like the Hitler Youth. It was a military type of feeling we had. During the inquiry, Robertson objected to the narrative that Hamilton was running the clubs on his own. He stated, There were other people who helped him. A lot of these people have just disappeared like snow off a dike. Following the shooting, the media presented the image of Hamilton as a paranoid perverted loner, an image that would be subsequently reinforced by the Cullen Report. The killer Thomas Hamilton finally shot himself dead. He was known to the authorities as an unstable loner, and schools had been warned not to let him onto their premises. However, many of the witness statements given in the inquiry were in direct conflict over Hamilton. Grace O'Gilvy, one of Hamilton's neighbors, testified that she saw photographs of shirtless boys on the walls of his living room. Geoffrey Wood was a member of the same gun club as Hamilton. He testified that he had visited Hamilton often but he had never seen any images of boys in the house. Another of Hamilton's neighbors, Kathleen Kerr, again presented a different picture of the perpetrator. This is where Thomas Hamilton lived, at number seven, Kent Road, Stirling. And this morning he left here, apparently quite normal, waving his hands to neighbors, relaxed, apparently at ease. Kathleen Kerr saw Hamilton set off this morning. He often popped in for a coffee. Someone likable? Yes. Got on with? Yes. Happy to have him in the house? Fine. Nice man? Very nice. I thought. Kerr was not called to give evidence at the Cullen inquiry. The witness that stood out the most during the inquiry was Doreen Hagger. Hagger stated that she had stayed at one of Hamilton's boys' camps for several weeks on an island in Loch Lomond. She left the camp after confronting Hamilton about the harsh treatment of the children and went to the police. She also alleged that Hamilton had threatened her with a gun and that she had attacked him, dumping a bucket of rubbish over him and kicking him up the backside. Hagger's daughter Vicky was scheduled to appear at the Cullen inquiry but had gone missing shortly beforehand. She was excused from giving evidence. The inquiry considered Doreen Hagger not to be a credible witness. Hamilton had been registered as unemployed since 1985, yet several witnesses at the inquiry hearings testified to Hamilton owning multiple firearms and boats, buying thousands of rounds of ammunition, spending over 10,000 pounds on photography equipment, and never appearing short of cash. After the police investigation into Hamilton, they reported that his accounts were empty and there was very little camera equipment in his possession. In December 1996, MP Frank Cook initiated a motion in Parliament calling for an investigation into allegations that Hamilton had been able to evade serious scrutiny from the police due to his Freemason connections. 
Records on Hamilton had been destroyed by Scottish police prior to the massacre in 1996. Cook claimed that Hamilton was a member of Masonic Lodge 1417 in Garrow Hill, although the actual lodge number of Garrow Hill is 1413. Hamilton's grandfather, James Hamilton, was a member of Lodge 76 in Stirling. Ronald Taylor was the head teacher of Dunblane Primary School and one of the first to enter the gymnasium after the shooting. In his statement to the inquiry, he stated that John Curry, the school janitor, had walked over to Hamilton and moved two guns away from the body. Taylor went on to submit, A number of men who were strangers to me, I assume they were police officers, with Mr. Curry, had obtained some material which I think had come from the stage, curtains on the stage, and used this to cover the windows on the gym. Despite being the first witness to reach Hamilton, John Curry's testimony does not appear in the transcript of the inquiry. Another conspicuous absence from the transcript is the testimony of Grant McCutcheon, an off-duty police officer who had arrived in the gym just after Taylor and Curry. Taylor stated that McCutcheon had told Curry not to move the guns away from Hamilton. McCutcheon was also mentioned in a 2011 documentary on Dunblane. Those in the storeroom, fearing for their lives, were eventually rescued by the staff and an off-duty police officer who was dropping his children at the school. McCutcheon's name never appears in either the Cullen Report or the transcript of the inquiry's proceedings. In the testimonies that were included in the inquiry about the immediate aftermath of the shooting, the witnesses describe only two guns. The Cullen Report claims that Hamilton had four guns in the gymnasium that day. This discrepancy was highlighted by Detective Chief Superintendent John Ogg's statement. One gun was in his hand, another was in the holster. Mr. Curry removed or kicked one of the guns out of his hand and removed the other one and put it across. When the police arrived, however, there were four guns on the floor. We never managed to trace anyone who spoke to moving the fourth gun. Lord Cullen's inquiry came under strong suspicion of being a cover-up operation from the outset. Aside from the alleged Masonic connections between Hamilton and the police, concerns were heightened when a 100-year closure order was placed on the documents relating to Hamilton and the shooting. Suspicions were focused on the restriction of the 1991 report of Detective Sergeant Paul Hughes, who investigated allegations surrounding Hamilton's boys' camps, and wrote the following in his report. Mr. Hamilton will be a risk to children whenever he has access to them. I respectfully request that serious consideration is given to withdrawing this man's firearm certificate as a precautionary measure as it is my opinion that he is a scheming, devious, and deceitful individual who is not to be trusted. No action was taken on Hugh's recommendations. In 2005, the 100-year restriction was lifted on some of the documents, but many of the files, such as Hamilton's autopsy report, still remain undisclosed to the public. On April the 11th, 1996, the scene of the crime, the Dunblane Primary School Gymnasium, was demolished, just one month after the massacre and well before the conclusion of Lord Cullen's inquiry later that year. One of the schools in Dunblane that Hamilton ran camps at was the Queen Victoria School, or QVS. QVS has recently come under scrutiny from a new inquiry into historical child abuse. A former housemaster at QVS, Glenn Harrison, claimed that he tried to report a group of men who were taking young boys away from the boarding school on weekends. The boys returning, distressed but flushed with cash. Harrison stated that when he contacted the police about the group in 1991, the police broke down his door, seized his personal papers, and dragged him in to be interviewed. Harrison also identified Thomas Hamilton as being a regular visitor to the school. In the Cullen Inquiry, a university student who assisted Hamilton with some of his clubs, Ian Boll, testified that he secured a job at QVS due to Hamilton's connections there. QVS is funded by the UK Ministry of Defence. <laughs>